Little Rainbow Marshmallows. Let's see what's cooking. Let's get the facts. Let's see what's cooking. It's time for Yo Yo Max 12. Hello, everyone. First thing you're going to do is prepare for a recipe of plain vanilla marshmallows. Starting off with the coating mix that's three quarters of a cup of icing sugar, also called powdered sugar, and one half cup of cornstarch. Whisk those things together and set it aside. Then in a small bowl, place one half cup of cold water and sprinkle over top of that four and a half teaspoons or two envelopes worth of unflavored gelatin. Then whisk it together just to combine the water and the gelatin and set it aside for about five minutes. That'll allow the gelatin to absorb some of the water like you can see here. Put that in the microwave on high for 35 seconds and the gelatin will dissolve into the water. Then pour it into the bowl of your stand mixer and add one quarter cup of corn syrup. That would be the clear or the white corn syrup. Put the whisk attachment on and turn it on low and just let it blend and put it aside. Continue to blend while we're making the next part of the recipe. In a medium or small saucepan, place three quarters of a cup of sugar, a quarter cup of water, and a quarter cup of white or clear corn syrup. You're going to heat this over medium-high heat. Stir it until it boils. Once it starts boiling, you can stop stirring. You're going to cook this until it reaches 240 degrees Fahrenheit, which is known as the softball stage. And the best way to tell this is with a candy thermometer. Now, I had to tilt the, the pot a bit here because the syrup wasn't deep enough for me to measure it in so I would recommend maybe a smaller saucepan to avoid this. Once it's cooked to 240 degrees Fahrenheit immediately remove it from the heat turn your mixer up a couple of notches so it's going faster and start to very slowly pour that hot syrup into the bowl. Once it's poured in turn it up hot a little bit higher and beat it for five minutes. Turn it up one notch more and then beat it for an additional two minutes pouring two teaspoons of vanilla extract in the last minute. So about seven minutes or so of stirring or beating. And what you'll get is this fluid mixture that barely forms soft peaks. Now here comes the more challenging part of this recipe. You should have a lot of things prepared before you start. For example, you should have six bowls, six spoons with six drops of different colors of paste food coloring and your piping bags ready to go. You need to take that marshmallow mixture and equally divide it among the six bowls, but you have to go fast because the marshmallow stuff firms up very, very quickly. In fact, I did, I managed to do this on my own, but it would have been a lot easier if I would have had someone to help me um, when it comes to the mixing and the putting in the piping bags. So once you divide your marshmallow mixture as equal as you can between the six bowls, then you're going to stir it all together as quickly as you can. And if you had two people, you could see you could do this in half the time. Once it's stirred in, you're going to spoon the marshmallow and the food color into a pastry bag that's had the corner cut off, or you could even use a Ziploc bag with the corner cut off. Prepare your six colors into the, pi the piping bags, and then you're ready to pipe it onto your cookie sheets. Now this is a cookie sheet covered with a silicone mat and I've even sprayed the silicone mat with a little bit of cooking spray and I lightly wiped it off with some paper towel just to leave a tiny little film of oil on the silicone mat. And then you're going to pipe out your marshmallow colors in straight lines. Now you can do this a variety of different ways. What I decided to do was pipe them side by side so that they were touching and that they would stick together. So with the size that I made, I ended up with six rainbow sequences, three on each cookie sheet. But if you make them larger or smaller, you'll have more or less. Once they're all piped out, I let them sit for 30 minutes until they firmed up quite a bit. And then I wanted to fold them over. So the end one, I thought I would try it. I would just kind of fold the silicone mat over like jelly roll style. And it worked, but the edge of the mat caught my other marshmallows and it kind of stuck as you can see these things are super duper sticky and I recommend actually that you put a little bit of cooking spray on the ends of your fingers when you're handling this stuff because it sticks like a crazy so for the middle one I just kind of lifted it up and folded it over and then the other one I did the same thing but I was a little bit more careful with the edge of the mat then you're going to sprinkle on 
some of that coating mixture you made right at the beginning of the video and you set it aside and let them sit there for about two hours until they are completely firm. Now I brushed off the excess of the coating mix with a pastry brush and now my intent was here to make little twisted ropes of marshmallow. And doesn't that look nice all twisted up like that? But this is the problem when you let it go it untwists. Um, it's very springy, it's very elastic, and it would not stay in a rope shape no matter what I did. So I was thinking maybe I should have twisted it while it was still curing and it was still sticky. It may have stayed in the twisted shape. So I decided just to snip them into some small marshmallow pieces with a pair of clean kitchen scissors. And I would recommend that you dip those cut ends into some of that coating mixture so that they won't be sticky to handle. Now, even though I didn't get the cool twisted rope shape that I wanted, um, these were actually quite impressive when they're all in a big bowl together with all those lovely rainbow colors. They taste great. If you've never had a homemade marshmallow before, you're missing something. They are vastly superior to the ones you can buy at the grocery store. The only problem with homemade marshmallows is that like any homemade candy, they absorb a lot of moisture from the air. So if you're living in a humid place, there's a good chance that these will get sticky fairly quickly and they should be eaten within a day or two to be their best. You can extend shelf life a little by keeping them in a sealed container and by sprinkling a little bit more of that coating mixture to keep them from sticking to one another. Now this is what the recipe made. It made a decent sized bowl that had about 40 inch and a half, two inch marshmallows in it. As many of you know, I have a special passion for rainbow colored food. If you want to see my rainbow playlist, go ahead and click right on your screen or see the link in the about section below. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.